Hi, how are you doing everybody? Jose Gonzalez, Preferred Flooring, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, we're bringing you guys a new tool from Leaser. It is the 500 LP, uh, battery operated. Uh, it's 18 volt, uh, 5 milliamp battery. Um, we think this is going to be very helpful for you guys in the field when uh, power is limited or you got to run a bunch of cords. So why don't you join us for a little bit? We'll take a look at it. We're going to show you some parts and pieces to it and then we're going to give you guys a little uh, sample of what it can do. Let's start with the main thing here, get this out of the way. Here's your Groover. Um, comes with a battery attached to it. Looks like it's got a couple little Allen key. Uh, it's actually a little bit beefier than I would expect. And you're going to have all the information for it. All the manuals are just in different languages. Yeah. So probably depending on where you're from, that's where you'll get your manual. It might just come with one in there. If everybody knows, oh, that's Daniel there behind the camera, so. All right, we got a little debris bag here. We got a charger. We have a chute that goes to the bag. An additional battery. Um, and this looks like this should attach to the chute there. See what kind of blade we have here? Just a standard Groover blade. Well, there's an introduction. Let's, um, let's put some of this together and see what it can do. Here's all the parts and the pieces that we, we took out a little bit ago. Let me separate this right here. Right out. Just like that. So obviously we have the battery right here. Um, then we have the dust bag is, is the actual name of it. Um, then they, they name every single aspect of it, but you know we have some uh, adjuster pieces here for the depth to so control it. You don't want to adjust too much. You can. But it actually has the actual measurements on there too in millimeters and inches. Yeah. All right, and then this, this one here is actually to hook up to a vacuum is what it's on. So, look. It's pretty smooth. Then you hook that up to the vacuum. We're not gonna go through all that today. That way we can see the full cordless capabilities. We do have a cordless vacuum over there, but I think we want to see, test it to see what the bag is going to do. Yeah, let's see how much it catches. Let's see how much it catches. That goes together pretty easy. Now we've got to worry about setting the depth. Right here is how you adjust the depth. And we're gonna play around with that and see how accurate that might be. So, I don't know if you can see it or not. We have zero all the way down to, see what the bottom number is? Well, it's like 3 16ths at the bottom, but we have Those millimeters, millimeters on this side, is six millimeters, so. I don't know what we would need to do six millimeters for, but it's there if you need it. Just gonna test the depth here a little bit. Uh, always keep a scrap piece. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I'm gonna line up that back fin. And drop that front one in. So I line up the back, line up the back, and then I'm gonna slide this on over until that drops in, until I feel it drop in. There we go. All right. Here we go, run number one. We're just gonna pretend that there's a wall there. Pretty consistent. All right, here's another tool that they sent us to, to give it a shot. This uh, at least are groovy. Um, 
is named that for obvious reasons. So we just gotta check some of the depth and try to adjust it. Got a nice turn dial adjustment here. You don't have to mess with a, with a screw or a grommet and then try to adjust the blade a little bit. It actually turns out. And then you can turn it back in. It's got the two wheels here that are made for the track. Um, comes with an extra little protection here. So you have a, a little holder for the tip. Right. Doesn't look like that went deep enough, so let me go a little bit more. Put your hand on top, stabilize however you want to. My first time using this, so I'm trying to, to learn it. Be careful. Blade's brand new, so it's fairly sharp. So that one went a lot better than the first one. You're done with that. You can pull this piece out. Put it right on there. What you, you don't want to do is you don't want to set it down without that. Somebody sets it down, you kick it, chunk it out. I would still set it on the side. Make sure it's safe. I'm just gonna check the depth on here. This is just a, a scrap piece, we don't care about it. But when you guys are doing that on the job site, make sure you keep the scrap piece around so you can check the depth for yourself. You're not gonna to wanna to check in the middle of the floor. So this is one, one of the biggest things that Gleaser was dealing with with the power groovers is that only on the other ones, it's just the blade that the that uh, adjusts, right? This one right here has this whole thing that's gonna follow the contour of the floor. So you, when you have those you know, small bumps and stuff, it's not just gonna ruin your material, it's actually gonna follow whatever the floor is doing with you. So it follows the deviations that are in the concrete. Right, area. because it, when it's just a blade, you know, the blade's at that depth the entire time. And if you're going over something, that blade's just gonna follow whatever the, the floor is doing. When you have those little sharp bumps that, you know, sometimes you miss something in a prep, you have the sharp bumps, the blade would essentially plow through and go too deep. Right. And this is to prevent the blade from plowing through that high point. And, and, and making a weak, a weak point in, in the oh, well. Okay. That bag is keeping it pretty clean. Very clean, yeah. Then you just got to remember with linoleum, the reason why it took us so long to get this set is because we want that jute showing. That way the weld has something to stick to and you'll be able to find a link on our, our page about just linoleum welds specifically. So take a look at that. Um, you can see exactly what it's supposed to look like when, you're, when you want to weld the linoleum. I just tried using the groovy on the ends here and it's just kind of chewing it up. So I'm just gonna go old school, old school and So we don't have a scrap needle on us right now, but what Daniel did is he took the back of the utility blade. And if you run it down the seam, you want to hear railroad tracks. You can hear, you can actually hear, hear the ridges. So I am noticing that um, on uh, um, the, the limo here, it is a lot, a lot more slippery surface when you're using this and, and, and the wheels. The, the metal just wants to slide on it a little bit more uh, than the vinyl material. I'm sure the rubber's gonna be a little bit stickier too. Um, uh, a couple of times I did apply uh, a little too much uh, pressure forward, and it does have a little bit of a tipping point. So I, I don't advise pushing all the way down and trying to focus on leaning forward rather than just keeping consistent pressure. So I did turn my hand here. So I 
as far as a one-hand operation, probably not on this material here because it could get squirrely um, really quick. This is the vinyl seam. This is the leno. You see that jute coming out? It's gonna give something for that rod to stick to. Come over here to the rubber. We got a couple of the seams already cut out. You guys uh, kind of walked through it with the video on us. That was my first time using it. Uh, Daniel's first time using it. Um, uh, reviews. Um, it does operate a lot better than what I used in the past. Um, as far as uh, box movers and whatnot, um, any of the power movers like that. Um, very clean, very, very, very sharp blade, but it's brand new, so we expect it. So a couple of things that, I'm going to go with the things that I did like first, uh, opposed to the things I do like. Things I didn't like is um, uh, the front is a little misleading. It, it almost tells you to press down a little bit too hard. Um, but if you do that, there is a tip, a tipping point um, that could definitely mess you up, especially if you're working on a slippery surface um, as, as some linoleum. Um, it can throw you off track if you're not prepared for it. Uh, the weight is 12.2 pounds. Uh, just gets a little bit heavier as you get a little more debris in there. It can be used as a one-hand operation. I wouldn't advise that until you become very comfortable with it. Um, as you, you can see in the video that we are paying a lot of attention to what we are doing because we want to earn the trust of, of the, the front lead here. Um, you don't trust it until you've done a couple thousand square feet, or linear feet, I'm sorry, a couple thousand linear feet. So um, we were just watching everything and, and being very careful. So the tipping point, I really didn't like that. Um, the the adjustment, um, I think it should have some kind of locking mechanism. If you're on a job site and you're doing tons of the same material, it, you should be able to lock it in place so that way every installer you have is uh, is consistent going at the, the same depth without having to backtrack and ask questions as far as what dimension we have in that. I think that's really it for the down point. Uh, what I did like about it is this actually worked fairly well. This caught a lot of the debris. Um, and it's adjustable for depending on the person. You might want it back here, you might want it in front. Um, you can still see the front wheel if you do that, but then you're gonna get to the wall and be stuck. So off to the side is probably going to be the best bet. Um, I guess it depends on your balance. Uh, the light, the light is amazing. That thing uh, um, probably could be a little bit brighter, but you don't, you don't really need much more. I'm very clean, very easy to use, very easy to put together, very easy to adjust. It's got a pattern, man. You ain't got a cord. You don't have the cord in front of you. You don't have the cord behind you. You ain't got to move it. You ain't got to have fine power. You ain't got to adjust the cord. You don't have to run 100 feet if you're on one of those projects where everyone's running off temp power. So that is a, that's a phenomenal idea. Great concept. Don't know why it didn't come out sooner, to be honest. How much battery did we end up using? Is it still full? Um, that little bit we did, one bar. Um, uh, I, I forgot to, to show you guys how much it was charged, but it, said it showed a full charge when we started. Um, but that was right out of the box, so it, it could have died a little bit in transport. Let's, um, let's take this apart and dump it out and see what we got. It's actually quite a bit that it held in there. Yeah, that's a lot. That's pretty funny. So 
that's typically all over the floor. That's what you guys are usually sweeping up after you're done with a with a power grouper or, or a box grouper. That's uh, that actually saved a lot of time, a lot of mess. And you see how clean it was. And the only reason I swept it um, in between grooming is just to make sure there wasn't any debris in my way um, that, that interfered with any of the meals. That's the only reason I did that. Um, it was still fairly clean. I didn't really get that much off the floor, but. Um, it's a very sharp blade.